Cutting through this much steel is tricky, even with a steel cutting saw. This is a four inch piece of steel, and my saw capacity is roughly three and a half inches. So once its first cut is made, I have to flip it over and finish the cut on this side. So it's really nice. So the next operation I need to do is I need to cut this at a 30 degree angle. So I've added this auxiliary fence that puts the piece of steel out about an inch, which gives me a deeper cut, and I've added witness marks. I basically just turned the saw to 30 degrees in either direction and added these marks. And that way I'll be able to line it up after I make the first cut. Finish the cut, you just flip this thing over, reposition, and line up with our witness mark. We got a good clean cut. We cut them both at the same time, so I've got two pieces at 30 degrees each. And what I need to do now is I need to remove this rust and scale. You won't get a good weld with rust and scale on here. And, and don't mistake that for experience because I have very little. I'm just aping what I've learned from others so far. Putting you in harm's way there. I just really wanted that shot. Okay, I've got this all clamped down, and I'm just going to go ahead and weld these joints. By no means perfect, but I'm pretty comfortable with Flip that. Flip this over and run a bead on the opposite side of the joint. So I can see there's a little gap right here that I need to fill in, but this bead across here looks really good to me. What I need now is I need two more squares, one on either side of this long piece. So I've got a nine inch section and a seven inch section and 120 degrees here. And uh, so I'll cut one, two, three, four, three inch sections. No, let's go with the four inch piece of steel. That seems like it would be a better pick. All done cutting steel for this project and I still got about six feet left. So I'm gonna go put this in the corner of the shop um, as a tripping hazard. So now I'm going to go ahead and fire up the welder and tack that in place. So anyone who tells you they're a prodigy is probably a liar. 
the way to get better at anything is to practice doing it. And um, that's what I'm doing right now. For me, it's all about the practice. The more I do it, the better I get at it, and uh, the practice is a good thing. I'm going to start with a coat of primer, and once that dries, I'm going to come back and do a coat of paint. I get comments all the time about what a crappy painter I am. It's true. I'm trying to get better at it. Apparently not all 4x4 posts are created equally, and mine were a little thick. Have you ever run an 8 foot post through a thickness planer? I have. Okay, so here it is assembled. These are all eight feet, and as you can see, it's gigantic, but I needed to put it together so I could know how high to make each one of these posts. Standard hammock holder that you get from the store. This is four feet off the ground. Um, I've got plenty, so I'm gonna make mine five feet off the ground. Five feet, which is right here. What I wanna do is not try to do that from the other side. I'm gonna use this as the measurement for both. So I'm gonna cut this and then I'm going to cut that other post to match. So here's the cut that I need to make. And you can see, I don't have the capacity to make that cut on my bandsaw. It, it just doesn't have it. So what you do, is you just give it a little twist, and we're just going to cut out this waste area here. will be the feet on either side and this will be the rise for the hammock. Since the feet are up a little bit, uh, what I want to do is I want to make some leveling feet for them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a half inch hole most of the way down and then I'm going to use this T insert. Alright, through here and well, that's tightened in place and then this can just be and then we just ready. thread this thing on. And now we can level these feet to whatever height we want and there will only be four points of contact and that will make for a much more stable hammock. So this is not its final home, we're actually working on redoing our backyard and it'll have a place in that. Let me show you a little bit closer what we're looking at. The stability of this really does come from the steel, but um, this has been shimmed, so there's actually um, shims in here to wedge it in there tightly. And then I've got four screws through the steel and into the posts. And you can see the other thing that I've done is I've added hardware for the hammock. The only thing holding up this hammock stand right now are those four leveling feet, and that makes this incredibly stable. I am extremely pleased with it. I'm very happy with my first attempt at welding. Um, I actually left in a lot of the welds, not just because I'm lazy, but because I wanted to make sure that I could look back on them and say, this was my first project. And honestly, for a first project, I'm going to call this a success. Uh, I really like the way this looks, I love how stable it is, and I'm really happy that it's done. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.